All right, I want to do a quick video. Um, this is kind of different from the rest of the stuff on my channel. Um, I haven't really done computer stuff, but uh, I've been building computers, upgrading computers, um, working on them for years and years. It goes way back to like the 286 days. And I'm going to be upgrading a motherboard today. And based on everything I've always done in the past, whenever you upgrade uh, a motherboard you really want to reinstall windows I mean it's that's just always been the case you can almost never get away with uh, an upgrade like that and not have conflicts during installation to the point where windows just doesn't boot so in the past for the most part I wouldn't even try this now I have done it uh, because I've even done it as an experiment so if you know that you're going to reinstall Windows, you've got everything backed up, you're prepared for um, a complete wipe when you uh, do the upgrade. So in that case, sometimes I've given it a try just for the heck of it. Um, and I've had a couple successes like that. Um, it's not the norm, or it hasn't been. It was probably a Windows 7 machine that that I pulled it off it and in that case like I deleted everything in device manager and a any any hardware drivers um, anything that I could find that was related to the chipset or the motherboard but we're now at a point with Windows 10 and Windows 10 is really robust um, and I've read a lot of success stories so I'm gonna give it a try so let me tell you what I have right now all right, what you're looking at is the current setup. So this is an MSI Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard X470, and the CPU is a 5900X. And you might be thinking, wow, I didn't know X470 could run 5000 series Ryzen's, but um, some do. And this motherboard was pretty beefy and overbuilt when, when it came out. Um, the VRMs were pretty much overkill for the first generation chips but um, they're still capable of running now the 5000 series but I really feel like they're at their limit the motherboard gets hot there's a, there's some instability um, because of the heat and I've run it with out of the cabinet with the case open um, I'm looking at temps from the CPU the case everything the motherboard is actually getting hot so I think the BIOS was a way to offer support for 5000 series chips, but isn't a good long-term solution. So that's why I want to upgrade to an X570. Well, let me show you what we have here. Okay, so this is what I'm going to. Um, X570 is a big upgrade over 470. Just that gives you more bandwidth. Um, PC PCIe 4.0 with more lanes and... Um, I, I don't know if that's going to make a big difference to me, but the, um, the memory support will be better because, um, the X470, I think when I got that motherboard, it wouldn't support anything over, I forget, 2400 or something, 28, I don't know, but with BIOS upgrades, they've made it where I could get the chip up to 32, or my, uh, memory up to 3200 but it's 3600 uh, megahertz memory. So there's, it, it can't even run what it's rated for on the old board. So I'll get some benefit there. Then you've got um, USB, faster USB speeds, more connectivity, blah, blah, blah. So, so in addition to just giving the proper support to the CPU, I'll pick up um, a lot of other benefits from this motherboard. One other thing before we do the hardware swap that I just want to mention is that uh, there'll be a lot of people that'll say, hey, if you're doing a motherboard swap, you really need to reinstall Windows because even if it works, you're not, you're not efficient. You've got old drivers and INF files and things like that that are loaded in Windows that are needless and it's just going to slow things down. So you're not running windows efficiently um, and this used to be the case I mean I would say absolutely valid 
uh, reason to do a fresh install back a few years. And further back you go, the more important it would have been. But listen, we're now at a time where everybody's got SSDs. I mean, your boot up time is not going to be affected by having some extra code that in Windows left over from previous hardware. This That used to be a concern, but the CPUs now, the power that we're using goes way beyond what we really need um, for day-to-day -day stuff. Um, most people are not running their computers at the limit. Gaming, the argument could be when you're gaming, you're pushing it, but at that point, any of the inefficiencies of an old um, install of chipset hardware, that's not going to affect that. So mostly it's always been kind of like boot up time and stuff like that, but we're, it's not even a factor. So if I can get this to install without having to do a fresh install, if I can use it with my existing Windows, uh, I'll be really happy and it'll save me a bunch of time. So, so let's give it a shot. All right, we've got the new motherboard in. Everything's hooked up. No major hassles. Um, as you can see, I don't care about wire management, RGB, none of that. I don't care. Uh, this PC actually goes inside of a cabinet, so you don't see it anyway. So, all right, let's go hook it up. I'm curious how Windows is going to handle this. Uh, like I said, I didn't do any prep to Windows. I didn't go into Device Manager and delete any existing things. Um, it's just going to have to deal with a whole new chipset and new drivers related to the, everything from USB to the SATA drives, everything. Let's see how it does. All right, we're all set here. We're all hooked up. Let's hit this power button. Uh, that's already a good sign because there's power. A lot of times with a new motherboard, you don't get anything and you have to clear CMOS and all that stuff going to BIOS. Um, in fact, let's try doing that. I don't. Just saying saying the memory is not in the best sockets which I could have sworn I double checked but we'll look at it all right so it sees the CPU it reports it properly Yeah, 20, it shows the uh, the RAM is 2400. It's actually 3200. Well, here's some profiles. We'll see. I'm going to wait to uh, play around with RAM timing, but... All right, we've got the hard drives all connected, and they are showing up properly. Let's see here. Let's close it. Let's see what happens if we try to boot. Come on. So I've got an HDMI connection to this 1080p monitor right here. And that's, that's the uh, main monitor, but once it boots to Windows, this becomes the main monitor. That's an ultra wide 1440. So until it boots into Windows, it's probably going to uh, report onto this monitor. And it doesn't seem like it's trying to run Windows here. Well, maybe here we go. Fingers crossed, this will save a lot of time.
It seems like a reboot. Wow. We're booted into Windows. Let me play with the video settings and I'll be right back. All right, so uh, I've been playing around with it and everything seems stable and fine. Um, device manager has no conflicts, nothing weird going on. So yeah, it's pretty crazy, but it seemed like it had no problem with that motherboard upgrade. So made me think what if i went to an intel motherboard and one of the new cpus from intel would it have been as easy i'm not quite sure but i mean in the past windows 7 8 i mean it i don't i would never expect that it could go from one chipset to another even within the same architecture so pretty pretty great um i'm i'm kind of psyched because going forward uh, I won't hesitate if I want to upgrade uh, like CPU and motherboard. I won't push it off because I won't be afraid that I have to reinstall Windows. I'll be prepared. You know, I'll definitely have everything backed up just in case it goes wrong. But um, really, it's it's pretty awesome that it did this. So anyway, if you guys are thinking about this, um, you saw my results. Hopefully you have the same. Good luck.